Hi there VC, Steve Whitty here, uh, time for another video. Um, we're in November, it's scary how the time seems to fly by. Um, soon be Christmas, only another couple of months of the year left. Um, hope everybody is well and um, life's treating you good, um, despite everything that's going on in the world. Um, this video is going to be a recent finds video. I've been picking up quite a fair bit recently. So I'm going to do, do, sort of like do a series of short videos with me recent finds rather than try and cram it into one um, video. Um, cause I, I think um, it keeps me interested, to be quite honest. And I think um, shorter videos, are, I think, keeps everybody else's in interest as well. So without further ado, I'm going to show you six albums, um, recent finds. So without further ado, first one is the Beastie Boys Paul's Boutique. Now this was issued in, not released in 1989. Um, and this is the follow up to License to Ill. Um, this uh, was recorded over a two year period. At the time of License to Ill, particularly, uh, particularly in the UK, Beastie Boys had a really bad image problem. You know, the whole, they were seen as sort of like the bad boys. Um, there was all the incidents that um, people kept uh, pinching Volkswagen badges up the front of people's cars. Um, it, they had so much negative publicity. Uh, um, so they must have come back, decided to rec record a new album. This is produced by the Dust Brothers. Um, decided to dispense with Rick Rubin. In fact, they left Def Jam, I think, at this point. This is released on the Capitol label. This is a reissue, by the way, not an original. Um, and it's an album really mainly, wholly comprised of samples. Um, and somehow it's but, but melded together into this wonderful album. This is really a, sort of a groundbreaking album. Sort of moved them away. Yes, it didn't sell as many copies as License to Ill, but it's probably, it's probably a bet, much better album. Um, it has been cited sort of as the Sergeant Pepper of hip hop. Uh, I could see, see that it, it sort of pushed it in a way, gave the Beastie Boys a lot more credibility. Um, I mean, it, it's it, 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 they would follow it up throughout their careers. Um, but this now, this is wonderful. Um, certainly is an album. If you haven't heard it, it's worth checking it. I was listening to it a couple of days ago, streaming it um, on, on my commute to work. Absolutely wonderful. Next up, this is um, Nick Drake's Pink Moon, um, the final album he recorded when he was uh, and recorded and released during his lifetime. Released in 1972, this was the third album. And compared to the other two, this is very much a stripped back affair. You've really only got um, Drake, his vocals and his guitar. You what you will hear occasionally some piano, bit, um, piano riffs in there. Um, but it's a really sparse album. And it may be an album that really t tells of his struggles with depression. As you are aware, that, um, he was he died in 1974. Um, it, it, some p p people think it's suicide, some think it's an accidental overdose. Um, such was the effect Nick Drake had, particularly on Joe Boyd, who, who produced these albums, uh, was that um, he literally begged Cliff Backwell at Ireland never to delete these albums. Um, that's why you see Nick Drake sort of like throughout the years. There have been various reissues. I think this mine's a 20, maybe 2015 reissue. Um, where, you know, it's a don't, don't delete. People will get it. And during the 80s, people started to get it. I think word of mouth um, got by that how great, the, great these records are, these albums are. It's very much... Um, it's 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 not an easy listen at times, but it's well worth seeking out. Um, Nick Drake was actually born. It came from Tamworth in Arden, which is about twenty thirty miles away from where I live. Um, and and he's and they do have a festival 
um it used to have a festival there because just to, because it was round, round but close by where nick drake lived um and um they always, they always have it every couple of years not sure if they're having one next year but um yeah well worth seeking out turn around next is the kinks something else by the kinks um released in 1967 this is a recent mono reissue uh, released a couple of weeks ago um this would be the final album that have any involvement with shout um i think ray davis wanted was beginning to be a bit dissatisfied with the production and he would gradually take over um this album is a sort of classic. It's, you've got on here David Watts, Death of a Clown, um, Waterloo Sunset closes the al album. Um, Harry Rags on here as well. Um, this is sort of like it could be the sort of the beginning of of um, of Bray Davis's sort of move to becoming more, more Engli the Englishness, or maybe could be c continuing. Um, Fe album features Nicky Hopkins on piano a lot, but also features um, his uh, uh, Ray's wife, what then wife Raza on backing vocals, particularly noticeable on Death of a Clown. She would have quite um, influence. She, whereas Ray wasn't really listening to what was going on, Raza would be at home while the band were out touring, listening to the radio a lot, and she caught what was on so she would contribute um sort of like make suggestions to ray what needed to go in what would sound good um and it, it i was in, interesting a few weeks ago um i was listening to the podcast a history of rock music in 500 songs and i did the episode on waterloo sunset and the guy the presenter sort of intimated that maybe raza's involvement uh, want it was more than just the occasional suggestion and backing vocals, and may have actually put in, put put in more into this into Ray songs than were that that that, that we knew. Um, um, there's very little recorded evidence of, of it. Um, I think he, he cited that in a rate that an interview that Raza gave that she may have put, put inputted more, but she, I don't think she's ever sort of like chased it up or anything it might be something to do with the um divorce settlement so there, there you go i just think it's a great album i've always been after this album for a while but i knew an original would cost me an arm and a leg so yeah it's that so i'm really pleased to have that next up a band i see a lot of particularly in the, from the american vc videos but I've never had a, owned a rock copy of the record. This is The Replacements, Let It Be. The other Let It Be album, I suppose. It was their third album, released in 1984. Um, described sort of like post-punk coming with age. And it saw the band wanting to move away from more of the hard post-punk sound that they were dealing with. And sort of like get involved in writing songs. Um and yeah i was pleased to pick it up it lit, i was in ignite records in birmingham it's in the oasis market and literally the copy had just come in and i thought you know what i'm gonna give this a go and yeah i'm, I'm glad i did i really enjoyed the album some gr great songs i know they've got some other classic albums like tim's one of them i think um so yeah i'm gonna continue seeking out um replacements at records if i can find them Excuse me, I've got a bit bunged up nose. Next, uh, Leonard Skinner's Give Me Back My, My Bullets. Their fourth studio album um, came out in 1976. In a way, it's, it's, it's nothing too remarkable about the album. You've got um, the title track, um, um, Double Trouble, A Light, um, Cry for the Bad Man. But 76 sort of really was 
particularly in the UK, a bit of a breakthrough year for Skip Leonard Skinhead. On the back of this album, they toured the UK and they made an appearance on the old Grey Whistle Test. They were asked to actually play live and occasionally they'd have a band playing live and Skinner did, did, did like a, 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 it was meant to last 30 minutes. Now, the old Grey Whistle Test was a TV program that ran on BBC Two and it was broadcast late at night uh, live. So in, in those times, the BBC were quite loose about when it finished. Um, they could allow the program if they wanted to, if they, they were a lot of um, guitar solos or songs, finish whenever, and then they shut down straight after it finished. Um, and this case, playing Freebird, um, you know, for, you know, you know, Freebird, the live version, it just it goes on and on and on with the guitar solos. Great, great as it is, and that's what it did. It. If you find the DVD, uh, sorry, the CD reissue they did a few years ago. There's a DVD with that performance on there. Um, so it's worth, that's worth seeking out. Um, I've got that. And obviously, 76, they played Nebworth as well, which um, that version of Freebird, which was on, which, which was played on the BBC, was at one point the most requested um, track video footage the BBC had. Um, so, but as I say, this is, as I say, go back to the album. It's a solid Linton Skinhead album, not their best but it's not their worst either. And any Lena Skinner album of that period, up to 77, is not a bad album. The final album I'm going to show you today is Bill Nelson's, um, I think, Chimera, called Crime, Chimera, Crimera, whatever. It's a mini LP released in 1983. Um, but at this point... Um, Bill Nelson had his old Red Noise. Um, they got kicked off of Harvest um, after the um, Fawn takeover. Um, he ended up um, re-releasing some stuff on his own cocktail label, but this is released on through Mercury. Um, this is very much an 80 sounding album. His guitar playing is not as much up the fore as as it's. Um, as I say with Bebop Deluxe, this is very much a, a synth laden album. Having said that, when the guitar does come on, it's it's as good, great as ever. You know, it's, it's just um, Bill Nelson just showing off what a great guitarist he is. Um, I think he's one of the UK's most underrated guitarists out there. And if you haven't heard any Bebop Deluxe, for instance, I would just go out and ch check it out because it's just absolutely wonderful. There you go. So Bill Nelson, always happy to find... I think one of one of my musical heroes. So there you go, VC. As I said, it's six albums. It's a relatively short video. So if you like what you see and you're new to the channel, you know you can click on the subscribe button if you want. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Love the interaction. And f what I love more is leave leave a comment. I'll I try and endeavour to get back to you. I'm enjoying a day off work today. This is Friday when I'm recording this. And on BBC Six Music, it's sort of like T-shirt day. So the band T-shirt is the cover of the Clash um, Cost of Living EP. Um, got that through a company called DJ Tees. Um, do some great T-shirts. Um, yeah, so, and I'm not sponsored by them. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to enjoy the day off. No doubt it will involve records. Um so whatever you get up to, VC, have a good weekend. Um, take care of yourselves. Keep spinning. But more importantly, keep on smiling. <laughs>